the final moments of Jesus' life, as recorded in Mark 15, 33 to 39, are both haunting and powerful. The scene is set with an otherworldly darkness descending upon the land at noon. This darkness, according to Phlegon of Trolls, was not caused by a natural eclipse, but rather by God's intervention. As the darkness enveloped the land, Jesus hung on the cross, abandoned, ridiculed, humiliated, and tortured. His last words, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, spoken in Aramaic, echoed through the darkness. The bystanders, unable to see clearly, heard these words and mistakenly believed that Jesus was calling for Elijah. As we read through the final moments of Jesus' life as recorded in Mark 15, 33 to 39, there is a particular verse that stands out. This is the verse 39. This verse focuses on the Roman officer's declaration after witnessing the way Jesus died on the cross. The officer looked on in amazement as darkness covered the land, and Jesus took his last breath. But it was his declaration that caught our attention truly. This man was the Son of God. Before Jesus was crucified on the cross, there were a series of events that led up to this pivotal moment in history. They took place in Jerusalem, a bustling city filled with people from all walks of life. Jesus had come to the city with his disciples to celebrate the Passover, a significant Jewish holiday that commemorated the Israelites' liberation from slavery in Egypt. As they entered the city, they were met with cheers and excitement from the crowds of people who had heard of Jesus' miracles and teachings. However, not everyone was pleased with Jesus' presence. The religious leaders, who saw him as a threat to their authority, were plotting to have him arrested and killed. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas Iscariot, had even agreed to betray him to the authorities for 30 pieces of silver. On the night of the Passover, Jesus and his disciples gathered to share a final dinner together. During this meal, Jesus revealed to his disciples that one of them would betray him and that he would be arrested and killed. He also instituted the practice of communion, where his followers would remember his sacrifice by partaking in bread and wine. After the dinner, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed while his disciples fell asleep. Suddenly, a group of armed men arrived, led by Judas, and arrested Jesus. They took him to the high priest's house, where he was put on trial before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council of religious leaders. The trial was a sham, with false witnesses accusing Jesus of blasphemy. The religious leaders were determined to have him executed, but they needed the approval of the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, to carry out the sentence of death by crucifixion. Pilate was reluctant to condemn Jesus, as he found no fault in him, but under pressure from the crowd, he eventually gave in to their demands. Jesus was scourged, beaten, and mocked by the Roman soldiers before being led to Golgotha, a hill outside the city walls, where he was nailed to a cross and left to die. The events leading up to Jesus' crucifixion were marked by betrayal, injustice, and violence. It is hard to imagine the thoughts of the Roman officer who stood there and watched Jesus suffer and die. He was just doing his job, overseeing the execution of a criminal, and yet, there was something about Jesus that made him stand out. Perhaps it was the way he bore his suffering with dignity, or the love he showed even to those who persecuted him. Whatever it was, the officer was moved to make a bold declaration, one that would have been risky and even dangerous in his position. In a world where the Roman authorities demanded complete loyalty to the emperor and the Roman gods, acknowledging Jesus as the Son of God could have been seen as a subversive act. And yet, the officer could not help but speak the truth he had witnessed. It's a powerful moment, one that has been remembered and retold for centuries. As we delve deeper into the story of Jesus' crucifixion, it's important to understand the context in which it took place. Jesus had been preaching and teaching throughout the region of Judea, performing miracles and gaining a following of devoted disciples. However, this didn't sit well with the religious authorities, who saw Jesus as a threat to their power and influence. They began to plot against him, 
looking for a way to silence him once and for all. Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' own disciples, betrayed him to the authorities, leading to his arrest and trial. The religious leaders accused Jesus of blasphemy and convinced the Roman authorities to sentence him to death by crucifixion. Crucifixion was a brutal form of execution that was reserved for the worst criminals and political dissidents. The condemned person was nailed or tied to a wooden cross and left to hang there until he died. It was a slow and painful death, designed to be a public spectacle and a warning to others who might challenge the authority of the ruling powers. The physical agony of crucifixion was compounded by the shame and humiliation of being stripped naked and displayed in front of a jeering crowd. It was a degrading and dehumanizing experience, meant to strip the condemned person of their dignity and their humanity. Despite the cruelty of the punishment, Jesus faced his destiny with remarkable courage and grace. He never wavered in his commitment to his mission, even in the face of death. In his final words on the cross, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, have become a source of comfort and inspiration for Christians throughout the ages. As Jesus hung on the cross, something extraordinary happened. Suddenly, the sky turned dark, shrouding the land in an eerie gloom. It was as if a thick blanket had been pulled over the sun, obscuring its light and warmth. The darkness lasted for three hours, from noon until three in the afternoon. The darkness was so intense that people could see the stars in the sky, even though it was the middle of the day. It was a surreal and unsettling experience, as if the laws of nature had been suspended for a brief moment in time. Imagine the confusion and fear that have gripped the people who witnessed this phenomenon. What caused the darkness? Some people believe it was a natural eclipse, but this theory has been debunked by astronomers who have studied the alignment of the sun moon, and earth during that time. It's more likely that the darkness was a supernatural event, a sign of God's power and presence. Whatever the cause, the darkness added to the drama and mystery of Jesus' crucifixion. It was as if the earth itself was mourning the death of the Son of God. The darkness was a symbol of the darkness that had descended on the hearts of the people who had rejected and crucified Jesus. As the darkness lifted, Another extraordinary event occurred at the moment of Jesus' death. The veil in the temple, which separated the holy place from the most holy place, was torn in two from top to bottom. This was no ordinary veil, it was a massive, heavy curtain that was said to be as thick as a man's hand. The tearing of the veil was a significant and symbolic act that signified the end of the old covenant between God and his people, and the beginning of a new covenant which would be based on faith in Jesus Christ. The holy place was the part of the temple where the priests would offer incense and perform other rituals. The most holy place, or holy of holies, was where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, and only the high priest was allowed to enter once a year on the Day of Atonement. The tearing of the veil symbolized that access to God's presence was no longer restricted to a select few, but was now open to all who put their faith in Jesus Christ. This event was significant not only for its symbolism but for its practical implications. Jesus had become the final and ultimate sacrifice for sin. The way to God was now open, and anyone who put their faith in could have access to God's presence. The Roman officer played a crucial role in overseeing Jesus' execution. As a centurion, he was in charge of the soldiers who dealt with Jesus, making sure that the sentence was carried out. He may have participated in the soldiers' taunting and beating of Jesus as they crowned him with thorns. But as Jesus hung on the cross, something changed in the officer's perception of him. Despite the brutal and humiliating circumstances of Jesus' execution, there was something in the dying sufferer's entire demeanor that was so unlike anything the centurion had ever seen before. As he watched Jesus through those wearisome hours, he saw the meekness and dignity of the sufferer. He heard those words so profoundly impressed upon the faith and reverence of Christians. It's hard to say for certain why the Roman officer had a change of heart towards Jesus in his final moments, but there are a few possibilities to consider. Perhaps it was the way Jesus conducted himself throughout his trial and crucifixion, or was the way Jesus spoke 
even from the cross, with words of forgiveness and love for those who persecuted him. Another possibility is that the officer was moved by the unusual events that occurred during Jesus' crucifixion. The sudden darkness and the earthquake that shook the ground would have been powerful and unsettling experiences. Whatever the reason, it's clear that something about Jesus and the circumstances surrounding his death made a profound impact on this Roman officer. To declare that Jesus was the Son of God in the midst of such a chaotic and violent scene must have taken a great deal of courage and conviction. As we consider the Roman officer's declaration, it's important to note the context in which it was made. The religious leaders of the time were vehemently opposed to Jesus and his teachings. They saw him as a threat to their authority and were quick to denounce him as a blasphemer. In contrast, the Roman officer, a representative of the very government that had sentenced Jesus to death, declared that he was the Son of God. This is a significant statement, as it challenges the religious leader's authority and suggests that they may have been wrong in their judgment of Jesus. The officer's declaration also speaks to the universal nature of Jesus' message. It shows that his teachings and his identity as the Son of God transcended cultural and religious boundaries, and that even someone in a position of power within the Roman Empire could recognize his divinity. Moreover, the officer's declaration highlights the universal significance of Jesus' sacrifice. It is a reminder that Jesus did not just die for a select few, but for all of humanity. As the Son of God, Jesus' sacrifice was able to pay the price for the sins of the entire world, making it possible for all people to be reconciled with God. As we reflect on the Roman officer's declaration and the events leading up to it, we can't help but consider our own response to Jesus. Do we see him as just a historical figure, or do we believe that he truly was the Son of God, as the officer declared? Are we like the religious leaders who opposed him, or are we willing to accept him and the sacrifice he made for us? It's easy to get caught up in the business of our lives and push aside these questions, but they are some of the most important we can ask ourselves. Share your thoughts in the comments below. The final moments of Jesus' life, recorded in Mark 15, 33 to 39, are a powerful reminder of the impact his life and death had on the world. The Roman officer's declaration serves as a call to action for us to consider our own response to Jesus and to live lives marked by compassion and forgiveness. The significance of the officer's declaration extends far beyond the events of that day. The story challenges us to consider the ongoing impact of Jesus' life and message on our lives and world. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.